Whenever Elon Musk makes news, SpaceX and Tesla inevitably come into the picture. But very few know about Starlink, a company that aspires to offer internet connections to practically everybody on Earth via an expanding network of private satellites circling the planet. In short, Starlink is a satellite broadband network that aims to provide satellite internet connectivity. Thousands of mass-produced tiny satellites are launched into lower Earth orbit, which work in tandem with ground transceivers to form a constellation of satellites. It is a part of the SpaceX program that aims to build a mega constellation of 42,000 satellites to provide internet access all across the globe. Hi guys, welcome to Science Faction. Before we jump into the video, make sure you have smashed the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you never miss out on any of our videos. It all started in 2018, when the first prototype satellite of Starlink was launched into orbit. During the development phase, SpaceX began flight testing of their satellite technology. The two identical spacecrafts, known as the Microsat 2A and Microsat 2B, were renamed Tintin A and Tintin B following orbital deployment, were piggyback payloads that were launched on a Falcon 9 rocket alongside the PAS satellite. The initial idea was to launch this satellite into an orbit of 1,125 kilometers above the Earth. According to reports, it flew around 500 kilometers above the Earth's orbit. This was a huge accomplishment because it, since the initial launch, demonstrated its capability to reach half the height at least. The satellites provide internet access, but at a slow speed. So SpaceX chose to deorbit all of the satellites within a year after the launch of Starlink version 0.1 since the advanced version of Starlink satellites, called Starlink version 0.9, were already in production. The advanced version of Starlink satellites, Starlink version 0.9, were designed and expected to boost the speed of broadband networks. In May 2019, 60 satellites of Starlink version 0.9 were launched. Indeed, the Starlink 0.9 featured additional functions, and one of the most interesting features was the foldable flat PV panels, which enabled them to pack hundreds of them on the Falcon 9 rocket. This increased the probability of the number of satellites that they could send in a single launch. It was equipped with all-effect thrusters that used Krypton and had a variety of uses. For instance, they assisted in repositioning satellites in Earth's orbit and ensured that satellites maintained their altitude and did not drift off course. The thrusters were also utilized to assist in the deorbiting of the satellites. The Starlink version 0.9 was also outfitted with star tracker navigation devices, which would aid the ground station in monitoring and determining the precise position of the satellite in orbit, as well as in tracking the movement of the satellites. The satellites were also equipped with defense-related technologies that would aid them in avoiding collisions with debris. In May, SpaceX carried out 28 successful missions as they launched the Starlink version 1.0 network, which became the first operational Starlink network. In each of these operations, the Falcon 9 could very well carry about 60 satellites, and in total, they launched about 1,700 satellites, which had never been done before in a span of two years. They introduced the vehicle band, which helped in the provision of faster internet. This band overlaps with other frequencies used by the 5G network, and this makes the connection more available for use through the Starlink satellite dish. Initially, beta testers received download and upload speeds ranging from 5 to 60 megabytes per second, and subsequently, the speeds reached over 100 gigabytes per second with a latency of 30 milliseconds. However, Starlink did not stop there, as they wanted to make a better version with faster internet speed and lower latency, which resulted in the creation of Starlink version 2.0. As we are into Starlink version 2.0, the main question is what differentiates this new version of Starlink from its earlier versions? And how can it help in increasing the internet speed? Well, the answer to this question is lasers. These satellites have lasers that allow communication between satellites without relying on ground stations. The previous version, Starlink version 1.0 satellites, did not have the ability to communicate amongst themselves directly as their data had to be relayed to a ground station before being sent or accessed by another satellite, which made data transfer a little slower, but with this new version, data transfer is much faster. The Starlink version 2.0 satellites will shoot an internet signal directly to a terrestrial gateway or user terminal, using lasers and each Starlink satellite will communicate with four other satellites. 
That means they'll spend data around the world at nearly the speed of light, which only fiber optics can match. This new feature allows them to communicate data directly amongst themselves, which results in faster data transfer and the ability to establish ground stations in regions where the company is unable to build them. Before Starlink 2.0, they launched 10 satellites into Earth's orbit for beta testing, under the name Starlink 1.5 in September 2021. Nevertheless, little information is provided about these satellites other than the fact that they are the doorway to the future of the global internet. With Starlink 2.0, it is expected to have an E-band frequency, which means it will be able to transmit data at a frequency of approximately 90 gigahertz. Additionally, through the laser links, global coverage could be expanded which facilitates the process of distributing their network all over the world. Starlink 2.0 satellites are estimated to orbit at approximately 570 kilometers above the Earth's orbit and are clearly going to make a very significant difference in the future of Internet satellites. So far, predictions by Musk have come true. The initial estimate of the number of satellites quickly increased as he planned to grab a slice of the estimated $1 trillion global internet connectivity market. The main objective is to have around 8,000 satellites orbiting just 500 kilometers above the planet, with the remaining 4,000 flying considerably further up at roughly 1,200 kilometers. After three years of successful launches, the project put over 1,000 satellites into orbit in January 2022. After one year and dozens of successful launches, Starlink now has over 2,000 operational satellites in space. The revenue growth of Starlink is consistently shooting up. Last year, Musk said that Starlink had served over 10,000 consumers. He also claimed that Starlink has shipped more than 100,000 satellite internet terminals to customers in 14 countries and received pre-orders from potential customers releasing a second-generation home internet satellite dish and exploring the possibility of providing in-flight Wi-Fi for passenger aircraft. In an email regarding the beta test program, SpaceX stated that consumers should expect rates ranging from 50 to 150 megabytes per second, with sporadic disruptions. According to the website, users can expect to see data speeds vary from 50 to 150 megabytes per second and latency from 20 to 40 milliseconds in most locations over the next few months. According to a list created by Reddit's Starlink community, the fastest download speed so far was 209.17 megabytes per second, which was logged in New York. In December, one man in Utah recorded a speed test that showed 215 megabytes per second. Though it depends on the location of the user, it has proved that with more satellites that are yet to be launched, the speed is expected to hit 1 gigabyte per second. Starlink's contribution to the Ukraine-Russia conflict SpaceX launched the satellite broadband service over Ukraine after Ukraine's Vice Prime Minister Mikhailo Fedorov requested assistance from Elon Musk's company during Ukraine's military confrontation with Russia. He stated on Twitter, While your rockets successfully land from space, Russian rockets attack Ukrainian civilians. We ask you to provide Ukraine with Starlink stations. After communication services in Kyiv were disrupted on March 1st, Starlink was quick to come to their aid. Ukraine's Vice Prime Minister thanked Elon for keeping his promise and appreciated the second batch of the launch of Starlink satellites in Ukraine. Yeah, that's all for today's episode, guys. With more than 40,000 satellites to be launched into space, when will this astronomical dream of Elon Musk and Starlink be achieved? Let us know what you think in the comments. Did you know that you'll be able to see a supernova this year? Click on the video on the left to know more about it. And if you want to know more about the James Webb Telescope and how it is one of the greatest marvels, check this video on the right. See you there!